uh, this one we're be we're going to be going over the entire uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. It's uh, one of my personal favorites. Now, don't get me wrong, this series has its ups and downs, as we all know. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, you know we're going to be going over every movie individually, uh, even the ones that we really don't like. So uh, we're going to start off before we even get to uh, the original Nightmare on Elm Street. We're going to start off by talking about the origins of the film uh, with, you know, the director Wes Craven and his idea for the film uh, and how it came about. So, uh, Chris, do you uh, you know the story behind that, man? Uh, yeah, I kind of do. Uh, I don't know if it's, it's exactly accurate, but uh, I heard that he read uh, in the newspaper that these people over overseas were having these nightmares. And uh, they've taken these pills and whatnot. And uh, it kind of, it, it translates into, uh, I think it was California or somewhere. Yeah. This kid, yeah. he kept a coffee pot in his room. And uh, his parents was trying to make him take sleeping pills and whatnot. And uh, he ended up dying in his sleep. I don't know the exact story. If you guys want to kind of chime in and elaborate. Um, uh, his, his parents um, tried to make him go to sleep. From what I can remember reading about the story. And he said he was afraid because there was a man trying to kill him in his dreams. And he was afraid that mm -hmm. if this man caught him, he was going to kill him. And his parents thought this is just foolish. He's just a child. He's just having a bad dream. Uh, mm -hmm. And he, like you said, he did have a coffee pot in his room and he kept himself awake at all times. And eventually his parents uh, gave him some medicine, some drugs, basically, to make him go to sleep. And uh, when they went in his room the next day, he had died in his sleep. So that and, that was the origins of a Nightmare on Elm Street. Would anyone like to comment on that, Jeremy? Uh, that is a very interesting story. I didn't really hear that before. That is, uh, wow. <laughs> that would be and, a terrible way to go in your sleep. Yeah. What yeah. about you, Mike? You want to comment on that, uh, the origins of a Nightmare on Elm Street? I'm still bothered in the child pedophile. That they made in the remake. Oh, yeah. Um, how about you, Vanessa? Would you like to comment on that? Um, yeah, I think this is the first time I'm hearing it, so I thought it was really, you know, I think that's really interesting that he based um, a whole, uh, his movie on that really interesting story. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the fact with all these movies, which we're going to get into that, but the fact that you're in your dreams, which your your dreams are supposed to be your your happy place. You're supposed to be able to do whatever you want in your dreams, but to be that, to be the most vulnerable in your dreams, uh, you know, and while you sleep, knowing that you could die, um, uh, it's just uh, it's a scary thought, and I really like how uh, Wes Craven, you know, capitalized on that and you know, made a Nightmare on Elm Street. Also, another thing I'd like to talk about before we dive into the movie. Um, the original movie and then going on throughout the series um his his look for freddy krueger was yeah. based on another thing from his childhood so you know something that he saw uh, as a kid while he That's was her. uh you know sleeping he woke up and looked out of his window and basically saw this homeless man walking down the street this man had a hat on uh and you know just looked just just looked very very scary very messed up and uh, the homeless man stopped and looked right at Wes Craven, like right through the window, and uh, just kind of smiled at him. And he, you know, he instantly had that idea, and that that stuck in his mind for all those years until he made a Nightmare on Elm Street. And thought that was really cool. That was his idea and his vision for Nightmare on Elm Street, which I thought was, uh, like I said, really cool. Um, but you know, the origins. Uh, it's really cool hearing, you know, what he went through to make a Nightmare on Elm Street, and. Uh, Anybody have anything to add about uh, the origin story of how it, you know, was born, basically? Uh, yeah. Um, I heard that, uh, I don't know if you heard the same thing, but I heard that, uh, you know, he was looking out the window, and Wes Craven got scared, got a little spooked. So he kind of bent down, waited a little bit, and I heard he peeked back out, and the guy was still, uh, still staring at him. Yeah, yeah. After he uh, after he looked and the guy was staring at him, he got scared, bent down, waited, and looked back up, and the guy was still staring at him. That was that was yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> Basically, just to terrorize the little little West Craven. Little West Craven, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, if we there's nothing else to add on the origin. Uh, if nobody has anything else to say, we'll move on to uh, 
to the French house. So, uh, let's talk about A Nightmare on Elm Street, the original film, which was made in 1984. Um, everyone knows it. Uh, I'll give my opinions on it last. Of course, directed by Wes Craven, starring Heather Langenkamp, Johnny Depp, uh, John Saxon. Uh, let's go down the line and uh, hear what everyone thinks about uh, about this film, starting with you, Chris. Okay, well, uh, yeah, like you said, 1984, directed by Wes Craven. Uh, it's a classic film, in my opinion. I really, it's one of the films that I watched when I was a little kid, had it on VHS, and it terrified the absolute fuck out of me. Uh, the scene that I remember the most is the alleyway scene where he's just terrorizing uh, Tina, and uh, that really stuck with me throughout my childhood. Uh, Freddy Krueger, he's the only icon that really terrified me. The film in general. I just, I really like it. I think it's very well directed. I think Robert England was the perfect choice for Freddy Krueger. Uh, he was leaps and bounds better than Jackie or Haley, which we'll get to that later. Uh, kills are really inventive. I really, really enjoy the kills because prior to this, we only seen slasher films. It was something new, uh, like a supernatural type slasher uh, because it wasn't in, you know, the world of reality. It's in a dream. And that's a lot of creativity that you can do there. Like Johnny Depp, how he got sucked into the bed, uh, the Tina kill. I, just, I love the whole concept of A Nightmare on Elm Street, and I think it's a brilliant film. Definitely in my top five favorite horror films of all time. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, what about you, Jeremy? Thoughts? Uh, I love the film. <laughs> so much better than the remake. Um, Chris basically said a lot of it for me. Uh, this film did scare me as a child as well. <laughs> but I never, uh, never really saw it at a very young age, but uh, as long as I can remember, I have always really enjoyed this film. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, me too. Uh, what about you, um, Vanessa? I think that um, A Nightmare on Elm Street is a really interesting movie. It's really good, I think, and I love how it brought something new to, you know, horror icons in general. Uh, like, Freddy was a lot different, especially because he could speak, and, um, I don't know, he, he was, I don't know, he was really um, just scary and a really good horror icon, and it's a really great movie. What about you, Mark? What do you think? I mean, what hasn't been said already, um, in this whole chat, um, it is, you know, a film that does stick with you, if you've seen it. Um, like Chris said, that alleyway scene is just a scene you can't really get out of your head. And, uh, Freddy, Freddy has great makeup, you know, the great effects in the movie, like the Johnny Depp scene in the bed, mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. Freddy going through the wall of his face, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, um, my thoughts on this film, I've I've always loved it. It's always been one of my personal favorites. And I think the reason I love it so much is, um, you know, obviously Freddy Krueger. And this killer had a had a personality. You know, it wasn't uh, just a hunt and kill kind of situation. It was hunt your victims and play with your victims. Let's, it's a cat and mouse game. Let's, he wants to terrorize his victims. Uh, in, you know, very different, brutal, and, you know, um, interesting ways, and creative ways, before he kills them, because that's all, that's what he does, he talks, he, you know, he has his personality, he's, he's very, he's funny at times, not necessarily in this one, but in later ones that we're going to talk about, and the fact that, um, just this bizarre concept, like, you know, somebody killing you in your dreams, something that, you know, we all think can never happen, was executed so well, and it made you believe that this was possible. This was one of the only films out of the franchise that really took itself seriously. Um, and, you know, a lot of franchises have suffered that. We have Child's Play, um, which has suffered, you know, oh, this is not real, so we're just going to play around with it and make it comedic. This one wasn't like that. It was the most serious one out of all of them, uh, and that's what I loved about it. It's how dark and how actually scary it was. And it was different for its time, like you said, Chris. Um, before that, we had Halloween, which I absolutely love. We had, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We had Black Christmas. We had many films before that. 
uh, Friday the 13th, we had all these slashers and even more lower slashers, and I'm not going to mention that we're just, you know, following the same formula, and this one switched it up massively, and it worked, and it was a, it was a success. Um, and that's what I love about it. The direction from Wes Craven was great. And you really you really buy that these kids are teenagers because, you know, they were young. They were very young. And Heather Langenkamp as, Na as uh, Nancy is another thing I'd like to talk about. Uh, one of my favorite uh, Scream Queens, Jamie Lee Curtis, Laurie Strode is my favorite. But one of my favorites, I think that she did, uh, she did very, very good uh, portraying this very young and innocent, unaware character. Um, you know, they pulled a uh, they pulled a psycho on us. You think you're going to be following Tina? Yeah. And, you yeah. know, that didn't happen. Although I like Tina's character, and her death was awesome. They, they just, they messed that up so much in the remake, but we'll talk about that. But I love that death. That's one of my favorite uh, deaths out of the entire franchise. Um, so, yeah, absolutely love the original uh, Johnny Depp's role in it. It was kind of... I mean, it, it, he he did a good job. It's a lower row to me. It's crazy to see him in these big blockbuster hits now. I mean, you look at him in A Nightmare on Elm Street, um, you know, being his uh, debut film. But, uh, yeah, nothing more I can say about it. Love this movie, always will. And it started, uh, a, it started a good series. I really like some of the other sequels we'll get to. Um, but, uh, yeah, anybody have any final thoughts on A Nightmare on Elm Street, the original? If you haven't seen it, check it out. Definitely. I think uh, on to the sequel now. Okay, so now we're going to move on to A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. Um, yeah. Chris, what are, uh, what's your thoughts on this film? Uh, well, it was one of the last ones that I've seen. Um, obviously, obviously, I watched the first one when I was a little kid. I watched uh, part three, part four. Uh, part two and part six was one of the last ones that I've seen. And when I've seen it, uh, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't a big fan of it. I'm not the biggest fan of it now. I don't think it's like a bad film. It's just kind of average to me. There's a lot of uh, just a lot of weird stuff that that's just it's just really obscure to me. It's like uh, it doesn't really have continuity to it, but I can understand why. And that's because that it's it was the first sequel, you know what I mean? Like, the franchise really didn't have, like, set rules by that point. Uh, but when you go back and watch it after watching all the other sequels, it's just, it don't make any sense, uh, some of the stuff that happens. I think Freddy looks good in the film. He, he's actually really dark in this one. That's one reason I really, you know, one strong point about this film is Robert England's performance. I just think that uh, some of the dream sequences are kind of lacking compared to the sequels, and uh, I don't know. I just I wasn't a big fan of the end. Uh, not too much to say about this one. What about you, Jeremy? Uh, I have to agree with Chris. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I don't necessarily hate the film. Uh. Some of the scenes, like the shower scene, was uh, very uh, awkward to see, you know, uh, as a, not really like a young kid, but I was probably like, uh, like 10 or 11. <laughs> so, I was just like, okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, not really that much more to say about it. All right, what about you, Vanessa? I agree. I think that it's unfortunate from like to go from such a great movie and then to come back like with a sequel like this. I mean, it's not terrible. Um, it's just I think they could have done a lot more with it, especially with the dream sequences. And I don't know. I just it's not it's not the best and it's not my favorite. So. All right. What about you, Mark? Um, you know, I like it. I actually enjoyed it. Um, probably one of my favorites in the series, to be honest. Um, it did kind of feel awkward at parts. It <clears throat> kind of made me feel uncomfortable watching that gym teacher. But, uh, I thought Freddy was pretty good in this one. He was a lot darker than the original, in my opinion. And he was pretty creepy. Um, they did, uh, some good makeup or some good effects, like the part where... He starts coming out of that kid 
Yeah. That was good. Yeah, that was good. Um, although the dream sequences had no relation to the plot or the story, um, I mean, I like I like Robert England a lot more in this film than I did in the original, but that's just me. Yeah. Um, okay. So now I'm gonna get I'm gonna get real about this movie. Uh, I'm gonna go into some things that some you know some people kind of danced around. I'm not homophobic, okay, but I'm gonna talk about the gay undertones in the film, uh, specifically the uh, the uh, the bad bad shower scene. Um, okay, now whenever. In a horror film, whenever you have, uh, <clears throat> whenever you have the horror icon, it being Freddy Krueger, um, slap a uh, gym teacher's ass with a towel uh, <laughs> while he's naked, um, you're 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 crossing the line. There's some boundaries that you can't cross, and that was crossed. And you, like I said, I'm not homophobic, but there was it was gay overtones everywhere, uh, undertones, overtones, whatever you want to say. And, you know, leading to the fact that the director was gay and Mark Patton, who starred in the film, was gay. And that wasn't even the biggest issue for me. Uh, the Like you said, the dream sequences. Um, also, to me, I mean, following Mark Patton coming from Heather Lingenkamp, I don't know. It was just uh, it was a weird switch. And the film felt so different from uh, from the original. And usually... Uh, with the first sequel, they're they're usually really good. It's very rare that the second film is the black sheep out of the franchise, um, which you could arguably say there's a few of those in this one. But um, yeah, it just I wasn't a huge fan of it. Little things, uh, Nancy's diary. We never saw her writing a diary. I wish that there would have been a diary in the original movie. If there's going to be little plot holes like that, uh, I, I just don't. Little things like that I notice, and it irritates me. But uh, and also the pool scene. Let's talk about the pool scene for a second. Okay, the pool scene was so bad to me. It was because there were so many things that could have been done um, in the pool yeah. scene. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, hey, can I jump in here for one second? Yeah. Um, I'm not trying to steal your, steal your spotlight or anything, man. But uh, to me, Freddy Krueger, the pool scene, it, it was okay. But to me, Freddy is one of those people, he don't go after multiple people. He sticks to one person. He stalks you. He finds your weakness, your fear, and he toys with you. He, yep. he isn't just a slasher that goes around killing people. Multiple people, to me, at least. Uh, yep. I know Wes Craven shares the same opinion. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, when it, you, you have him just come out and the, these kids you know all the kids around him are just so terrified of him immediately um you figure there'd be some kids that are drunk they're partying there was some yeah what is that sound guys before we go any further uh i keep my mic muted but like when other people are talking it's just not me uh, not me either i'm okay. not talking uh but uh he just comes out looking, he just, I don't know, he looks like a, he just, ah, waving his hands, everybody's afraid, one of the kids is like, we can help you, man, we can help you, I'm thinking to myself, why, like, there's a million kids, seems like at this, this girl's party, why not just tackle him down to the ground, why not just trample him, like, there's one guy, yeah. he's waving his hands back and forth, acting like, like he's an idiot, I mean, you've got the jocks in the corner pissing their pants, and... I mean, I don't know. Just the the pool scene was could have been so much better. Um, a lot of people love it. Me personally, I don't. But uh, it's just uh, it's an average film. It's to me, it's it's one of my least favorites out of the series. And the fact that it was made in 1985, the original was made in '84. Uh, the script was obviously rushed, and that's why it wasn't uh, wasn't that good of a film, in my opinion. Um, but yeah. Anybody got any final thoughts on Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge? Grady effects on Freddy ripping his brain. That, that was good. That was a good effect there. The shower scene will haunt you for the rest of your life. 
That was pretty kinky. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> okay. Uh, on that note, we'll move on. Uh, move on to. Uh, one of my personal favorites out of the franchise. I definitely think this is the most well-made sequel out of the franchise, and that is A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, Dream Warriors. So uh, go ahead and go down the line. Chris, what do you think about this film? Uh, summing up in a sentence, I fucking love this film. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I just I grew up with it. Me and my brother watched it. Um, I know it's a little, you know, with the dream powers, it's a little silly, but I don't know. I just really like how they brought it back to what it could be you know they expanded it a little bit uh it, it wasn't like part two even though part two i don't think is terrible i definitely prefer this one over part two it's my favorite sequel i think the effects are really good you have chuck russell and um I'm trying to think of his name i don't know why i can't think of his name he uh did the first season of the walking dead his name uh, oh. the, the guy who did the first season of the walking dead uh, uh yeah. frank Yes. Yeah, he had, you know, some something to do with this film, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think uh, he was, Chuck Russell was the director, and Frank Darabont helped out with something. Either I could executive produce or something like that. But still, uh, it has some of my favorite characters. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the nerdy kid or Taryn. I don't understand what her dream power was. You know, I'm beautiful and bad, but uh, <laughs> Ken Cade, hands down, is my favorite character. I am the wizard uh, master! <laughs> uh, I, that, that that part's really cheesy, but uh, <laughs> Ken Cade, Joey, uh, I really like Kristen. I like, you know, uh, the girl who played her. I uh, forgot her name. Um, uh, Patricia Arquette, isn't it? Uh, Patricia Arquette. Patricia. Okay, my bad. That's but cool. uh, I like uh, how they brought back Nancy. I thought that was really cool. Oh, yeah. Finally brought back Nancy. That's what I wanted to see in the sequel, but we didn't get that. Uh, it just had very creative uh, dream sequences. Freddy did have more uh, more comedic, you know, it was more comedic Freddy, but it didn't push it over the line like Part 5 and the other sequels. Uh, I, just, I just really like it. I'm just rambling, to be honest. <laughs> it's just it's a really good film. I can rewatch it anytime. All right, Jeremy, what about you? What's your thoughts? Uh, I also love this movie. I'm pretty sure me and you watched it. Uh, it was like a couple years ago, wasn't it, Chris? Mm -hmm. And we just had a great time watching it. Uh, it is my favorite sequel in the Nightmare franchise. Uh, the Dream Sequences was much better than the second one. And uh, I just thought it was awesome to see Nancy back, you know. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was so much better. And I still love this film. <laughs> All right, Very what do you cool. think about it, Vanessa? Um, I agree with everyone. I think this is a great comeback from, like, this, uh, the second sequel, and I just, I really like it. I, I agree with everything that's been said already, so, yeah. Testify, sister. <laughs> what about you, Mike? Well, before I do talk about the third one, I'd like to say the main highlight to me of this whole franchise is the practical effects. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And, like, this one had great effects, like, Freddy coming out of the TV and, oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. the guy getting controlled, like, a puppet, but, uh... Yeah, I love that scene, too. Mm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a great sequel, it honestly is more of a sequel to the first movie, um, and it, you know, you get John Saxon back in it, um... Yep. Yeah. It's just a great sequel. Well, I have one thing to say about this film one thing to sum this up and that is welcome to prom time bitch yeah. uh, no. <laughs> seriously though i love this sequel like i said uh it's uh i think the most well-made sequel one of it's my second favorite uh sequel out of the franchise um i love it love that they bring back uh heather lane camp as nancy and i think that it was you know it's time for her to come back and seeing an older nancy and seeing how this is actually wore down on her mind uh, wanting to help these kids who were having the same issue that she had when she was a teenager, uh, and really, um, really, uh, you know, connecting with uh, Patricia Ar uh, Patricia Arquette's character, um, that was really cool uh, to see. Uh, I just really liked it. I liked how they, uh, you know, they had some new characters, like you said, uh, Kincaid and Joey. Uh, really liked that, and I like uh, like the dream sequences a lot more than <laughs> the dream sequences and. Part two, 
So coming off of part two, you go into part three expecting, you know, maybe this isn't going to, maybe this is a dead franchise already, or at least back in the day, if I was, you know, alive back in 87, that's what I would think. You know, uh, you know, I don't know how, how good part three is going to be, but it totally, totally redeemed yeah. itself. And, uh, you know, but it also introduced uh, the uh, the comedic, more comedic aspects of Freddy. Um, but I, I really enjoyed that. Really enjoyed the kills um, in the film. The story worked. Um, liked everything about it, uh, the direction. So, yeah, one of my personal favorites. And uh, I definitely think it is the most well-made sequel out of the franchise. And I love the uh, love the music, too, on the soundtrack. Oh, yeah, Doc and... Yep. Yeah, man. Uh, I just want to make a comment on that. I I just have one thing to say before we move on. Uh, the only downfall of this film, I'm I really love it, but uh, the ending with uh, you know, the stop animation with uh, you know Freddy Krueger, uh, yeah. I just wasn't a big fan of that. That's really the only nitpick that I can really say about the film. Mm-hmm. I thought there was one scene in the film that was uh, pretty crazy. Um, I mean, all the scenes, all the dream sequences were crazy, but. Uh, the one where Joey gets tied to the bed by that nurse by tongues. Yes, that was that's crazy. <laughs> over like over Very. a pit of hell. It's wrong, Joey. Feeling a little tongue tied. <laughs> on wrong. Love that man. Love it. Oh, uh, okay. Much. Any uh, no final any other uh, final thoughts on uh, the Dream Warriors? Uh, I like the proof. I like the part where he sticks the needles in that girl that was a druggie. <laughs> He's got all those track marks on her arm that have like mouths that they're like opening up. That was that was awesome. Like an ear. <laughs> oh yeah. So now I am the wizard master. Okay, so we'll move on to uh, <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street Part Four. Um, my this is my favorite sequel, and I'll get to that in a little bit. And this is the Dream Master. So go down the line, Chris. What do you think about Nightmare Four? Uh, I almost, I almost love it as much as I do the third one. I really do. Uh, the first one, like I said, you know, it's just one I've seen at a young age. Uh, like the first, uh, I've seen the first one, the third one, and the fourth one at a young age. So I really do like all of them. And I don't know, I, I really like to watch them back to back, the first, second, and third. That's the perfect trilogy to me. Um, I, I just, I like how the fourth one, uh, even the third one, but uh, mostly with the fourth one, it has this good 80s feel to it it really oh, yeah. does the soundtrack is amazing i think the kills are almost as good as dream Warriors, if not better i think uh, the dream sequences are good i mean they're definitely better than part two not trying to rag on part two um i, I just i don't know i really do enjoy it almost as much as i do uh the third one i think the characters are awesome uh they did replace you know uh patricia arquette with uh tuesday night which i, I was okay with she was an okay replacement like how they brought back the previous characters, and uh, I just like the film in general. It's a really good sequel, and uh, it's almost on par with Dream Warriors, in my opinion. All right, Jeremy. Uh, I thought it was uh, a really great film as well. Uh, do agree with Chris. Almost love it as much as I do uh, Dream Warriors, uh, and I just think it's a. Uh, just a really fun film to watch. I thought it uh, had a pretty decent cast. I like seeing you know, some of the old cast return, which is uh, awesome. And I don't know, man, uh, a lot of it's been said already. All right, what about you, Vanessa? Um, I actually don't really like Dream Master that much. Um, I just, uh, I just, I just, I just think the movie was like um, a bit. Rushed. Um, something I do like is uh, the special effects were amazing. Um, mm -hmm. I think the dream sequences happen like really quick. Like usually you could tell if it's a dream or not, and like they just like jumped right into it in this movie. Like you could tell automatically that it was a dream. And yeah, I just I don't know. It's not my favorite. How dare you? No, I'm just <laughs> what about you, Mike? Um, yeah, it's almost as good as three. Um. I like the part where, like, I think, I think it was the glove flying at the kid. I, I think, I don't remember. Um, there's that stupid kid with the 
girl getting her air sucked out by Freddy <laughs> in the classroom, which was kind of ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, I remember liking it. What a suck face. Yeah, what a suck face. <laughs> <laughs> I like when she has um, her inhaler and that guy's like, baby, you're sucking on the wrong nozzle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, anyway, uh, the Dream Master, uh, is, I like it better than Part 3, it's one of my personal favorites, um, like I said, uh, it's, it is my favorite, uh, sequel out of the, out of the franchise, um, what, what I love about this movie so much, of course, we have, uh, obviously, uh, Robert England, who pretty much, he makes an appearance in all these movies, except one, which we'll get to, um, oh, yeah. Is, He's Robert England is the glue that holds the franchise together, um, doubt. and really makes it work. Uh, and what, what I liked about this one, you you know, it's, it has a different feel. It has a great '80s vibe, and that's what I've always loved about it. Um, we have uh, Lisa Wilcox coming in, and uh, as Alice, you know, Alice being the new uh, the new pro the new protagonist, uh, the new uh innocent young girl for freddie to prey on uh at first we're uh, we're brought back with uh kristen who as you said was you know replaced um from patricia arquette to tuesday night which uh any whenever there's a role reversal whenever it's you know there's a new cast uh or you know someone has to be casted it all it's always an issue with me but with tuesday night it wasn't wasn't a huge issue i know everybody hated her acting there but uh it wasn't uh, wasn't too bad for me uh, we're also brought back with uh, Kincaid and Joey. And that was cool to see. Um, and I don't know, I just, I've always loved the movie, loved the dream sequ- sequences. Uh, a lot following Lisa Wilcox. I think she did a good job uh, in part four. Um, and yeah, always love, I love the, uh, the, the one, uh, the kill. I completely forget the girl's name, uh, her actual name, uh, in the film. And, uh, she is uh, she's the the badass girl who loves to lift weights and when she turns yeah. into a when she turns into a roach basically uh or whatever she's turned into a but whatever bug it is that yeah. scene was discussed <laughs> that was yeah. when her arms come off like that yeah, would be pretty. yeah i love that scene it's one of my favorite uh, favorite kills um but yeah great film to me uh you no know, people have their uh, mixed opinions on it one thing that I did find kind of kind of funny, uh, it's like, uh, how did uh, Freddy Krueger come back to life in this one? After part three, how could he ever come back to life? Well, a dog pisses fire on his grave. Um, yeah. You know. it, was, it was a hell hell, dude. What? That dog must have had a severe year. It was a hell of a dog pisses fire on his grave, and his bones are in the ground, and his flesh, like, instantly starts growing back. And, uh, yeah. Kincaid's like, shit, <laughs> I'll see um, you in hell. Take that, motherfucker. Yeah! Kruger! Put that! <laughs> Part four, guys, I love it. Uh, it's cheesy. Um, and it really started, uh, as much as I love the film, 